Hello students, in this video we'll discuss the mean squared error of an estimator. So if I'm given samples x1 through xn of a distribution x, which has parameter theta, Define the mean squared error to be the expected value of your estimator minus the true parameter squared. And typically what you're going to see is, this is assuming, of course, you're doing this calculation assuming that you know theta. So we're going to suppress this notation, though. So in other words, this is expected value of theta hat minus theta squared, right, given theta. This is the mean squared error of the estimator theta hat. Okay, that's the mean squared error. And so what we want to do, of course, you can see what you'll oftentimes see in other, in other texts or in other sources, or you'll see this written in the following way. You'll see this written as 1 over n, the sum j goes from 1 up to n of x, j, minus x j hat squared, where this is the um, samples, and these are the actual, right, or observed and predicted, right? So, you know, whereas you observe something and you predict something. So, use the difference between the observed and the predicted squared averaged, okay? Let's prove the law, the bias variance trade-off. So, what we can do, actually, is let's take this mean squared error, and so this is a standard calculation. So, take the expected value of theta hat minus theta squared. And what I'm going to do is, of course, everything is given theta, right? I'm just going to suppress that to keep the notation clean. What I'm going to do is I'm going to insert into this expected value. I'm going to look at this and look at theta hat. And I'm going to put in a minus expected value of theta hat, again, given theta, right? And I'm going to drop that given theta. So I'm going to add and subtract in this quantity over here, given theta, given theta. So I add and subtract in that quantity, and then I have minus theta, quantity squared, okay? And so now, let's see, do I have all the parentheses right, uh, right there, and then right there? Okay, excellent. So all I've done is I've added in zero into this whole expression. Now I'm gonna group these two terms together. So when I square something, I'm gonna group based on these things over here. So this is like my A and that's my B. So when I square something, I'm gonna have the following three terms. I'm gonna have the expected value of A squared. So that's gonna be theta minus expected value of theta hat. Now I'm gonna drop the given theta. That thing quantity squared. Then I'm gonna have two copies of theta hat minus the expected value of theta hat. And then that's times expected value of theta hat minus theta. Those the cross terms. And then finally, I'm going to have these terms squared over here. That's going to be expected value of theta hat given theta minus theta quantity squared. Now I have three terms to handle over here. So I'm going to break this into three parts. So if I look at this first term, the expected value of this first term over here is just the variance. It's, the, it's a random variable theta hat minus its expected value, quantity squared expected value. So that first term over here, these terms over here, give you exactly just the variance of the estimator theta hat. Good. Then I have plus twice the expected value of this product over here. Uh, and I'm just going to multiply everything in that product out. So I'm going to have twice theta hat expected value of theta hat. That's the first term that I'm going to have minus expected value of theta hat quantity squared for those terms. Then I'm going to have a, let's see, so I got this term and this term, I got this term and this term, I got to do this term and theta, so I got a theta hat and theta, and then finally theta and expected value of theta hat. It's a lot of multiplication, but that's what we get when we multiply everything out. And finally, what's the expected value of this term over here? Well, this is, a, this is a number, and that's given to us. That's just a constant, so that is just what? This expected value of theta hat given theta minus theta is the bias, but it's squares. I'm going to put plus the bias of the estimator theta hat quantity squared, the squared bias. Okay? So, so far, this mean squared error is the variance plus the bias squared plus this middle term over here. So let's take that middle term and sort of simplify it a little bit. So what will this middle term over here give me? It's going to give me four terms over here. It's going to give me the expect, well, that's a constant, so it's going to give me two. The first term is expected value of theta 
hat, expected value of theta hat. Expected value of theta hat squared is a constant, so I get minus expected value of theta hat squared. And then this is going to be minus theta expected value of theta hat. And then this thing over here is going to be uh, minus, uh, let's see, and of course I made a sign here, that's going to turn into a plus, right? So there's a plus over there, they have to cancel, so that's going to be a plus, because I have a minus minus turns into a plus. And then plus expe uh, theta expected value, expected value of theta hat. And so, of course, those terms cancel, and these terms cancel over here. So these middle terms, these cross terms over here, are just equal to zero. So they zero out. So we've just shown over here, as we've just shown, hence, the mean squared error is equal to the variance, the mean squared error of your estimator theta hat, is the variance of that estimator theta hat plus the bias of that estimator quantity squared. And so this is called one instance of the bias variance trade-off. So this is an example of the bias variance trade-off. Okay? But the, the main focus is that the two, two principal things contribute to the mean squared error. The variance of the estimator, in other words, how much, the, how much the estimator spreads, and the bias, how far away is it from the actual prediction. So the bias is a measure of how far away the, the estimator is from the actual prediction, and the variance is an estimate of the spread of that predictor, right? And of course, for things like linear regression, you also have things in, in, things in models called irreducible error. So the mean squared error can also, in certain cases, contain an irreducible error that comes from a general randomness about the problem. Thank you very much.